Welcome to Daily Dose of Inspiration. My name is Claudette Estherine Campbell and I am your host. Daily Dose of Inspiration is part of our tips, tutorial, inspirational planning series. Have you been following the conversations, the hot ones in fact, about gender being a social construct and the fluidity of gender identity? You might be wondering, why is this an inspiration for us? Well, why wouldn't it be? We are a woman-focused nonprofit organization, and by woman, we mean those of us who were born with genitals that biology as we know it says we are females. However, in recent years, the debate and even demand by sectors of humanity that anyone can identify as a woman has, co has raised concern in many quarters. Concerns regarding the possible erosion of hard fought for rights by women as we know that to be or them to be. So today, this is our question and focus. Who are women? The publication called Psychology Today tells us, and I quote, All humans are born with biological characteristics of sex, either male, female, or intersex. Gender, however, is a social construct and generally based on the norms, behaviors, and societal roles expected of individuals based primarily on their sex. It continues, gender identity describes a person's self-perceived gender, which could be male, female, or otherwise. In recent years, expanding the public understanding of gender has freed many to feel more comfortable in their own skin and live as the people they believe themselves to be. They also continued, people whose gender identity corresponds to their biological sex may be referred to as cisgender. Transgender people have a gender identity that does not conform to the sex they were assigned at birth. And people whose gender identity feels neither masculine nor feminine may identify as non-binary, while those who feel no gender identity may refer to themselves as agender. End quote. Cisgender? Those who accept themselves as sexually female and their gender identity as women are cisgender? Nothing against transgender, non-binary, and agender persons. Those who claim, those who claim that their those things as their gender identity. I shouldn't say things, but labels as their gender identity. But frankly, I personally am not comfortable with the term cisgender. Are you? I too have concerns regarding the erosion of women's rights. Us, females, cisgenders, if you may, who have been relegated to the sidelines for centuries and have and continue to fight so hard, even in this, for our rightful position in society as human beings. What about you? Please, do watch this clip and share your thoughts respectfully. And this conversation is one that we must continue to have. Thank you for your testimony. The chair now recognizes Dr. Grossman for five minutes for your opening statement. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. My name is Miriam Grossman. I am a board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist, author, and senior fellow at Do No Harm. I have been taking care of patients for 45 years. I'm going to use my time to respond to Dr. McNamara. First, I'm struck by her use of the phrase sex assigned at birth. Sex is not assigned at birth. Sex is established at conception and it's recognized at birth, if not earlier. Dr. McNamara claims that her views are science-based, but to claim that sex is assigned at birth is without any scientific basis whatsoever. Its language misleads people, especially children, into thinking that male and female are arbitrary designations and can change. That is simply not true. All seven countries, and Florida too, of course, 
concluded the kids don't need their development interrupted, the girls don't need their periods stopped and their voices lowered, and the boys don't need to grow breasts. What they need is psychotherapy. I have other objections to Dr. McNamara's testimony. She insists that her position, only hers, represents standard medical care. What she doesn't want you to know is that there is no standard. There's a debate. There's a fierce debate. And on the side opposite her stand such prominent figures as Stephen Levine, Kenneth Zucker, Paul McHugh, and James Cantor, among others. These doctors are giants in the field. They have been treating transgender patients and gathering data and publishing papers about them, and I mean no disrespect here, but since before Dr. McNamara was born. The point is that those veteran clinicians and others who have wisdom and experience are ignored because they disagree with the current narrative. They're against medical interventions for the same reason those seven countries are. There is no evidence of long-term benefit, but there is evidence of harm. Thanks for watching another episode of Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration is posted on Mondays and Wednesdays with a recap on Saturdays on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the like and follow us to get more tips.